It's day four today and we're going to Akihabara and also Nepali but now we're going to um, find something to eat first. It's like it's feels super local to be like walking around in random areas but it's just like really hard to find something to eat because I think it's like more like a residential area than like a shopping area or whatever but yeah. We ended up settling in a bakery inside the train station before heading to Akihabara. We bought some bread here. We got a chocolate croissant. I'm in Akihabara right now. There's a lot of capsule toy machines right here. We saw these machines inside the train station and they were a lot cheaper than those in America. So this place is well known for all the electronics that they have and also right next to that street there's like a lot of anime stuff so sometimes you'll see people um, cosplaying. And guess what? The first thing that caught my eye was a dessert place. I'm at Pablo Mini right now so it's like it's a super uh, famous cheese tart place and I got one for myself which is like I think it's um, strawberry flavor. It's like creamy and creamy strawberry flavor. See how nice this cheese tart looks? After hanging for a bit in Akihabara, we went over to Shinjuku. I'm in Shinjuku right now. Um, later we're gonna have like dinner, an early dinner because it's like a very um, it's a very famous restaurant. So right now I'm in Shinjuku like two hours early because I want to look at this city. It's like a typical tourist area, so there's a lot of people. Let me show you right now. Shinjuku is a super large entertainment, business, and shopping area. It hosts one of the country's busiest stations, the Shinjuku Station, so the area is constantly packed with crowds. I'm currently in this building that has everything possible. Like this floor sells a lot of lights, and this floor has a lot of home goods. It's super interesting because this floor has a lot of different electronic stuff like accessories, and then there's wine behind me, like sudden change. Look at all these alcoholic stuff right here. Japan is also known for its drinking culture, especially when it comes to business occasions. So there's no wonder there are so many different types of alcohol options available around. After walking around for a bit, we finally headed towards our final destination of the day, our dinner place. I'm in Lokusen right now, and this is like an all-you-can-eat um, Kobe beef place. So. Um, we can order as much as we want. They even gave us an apron, which is super fun. Look at all these beef that are so nicely plated. It's okay. We also got to see the busy crossroads of Shinjuku from the restaurant. It feels so different looking down from above. It's just like seeing normal things from a whole different perspective. After dinner, we decided to take a stroll around. As you can see, stores were open, people were hanging out, all the energy was still there. It just feels like the city doesn't sleep at night. It's day 5 in Japan and today I'm going to Toyosu Fish Market. Um, it's a very special day because it's the first time that I'm ever taking a bus in Japan because it feels harder to take the bus usually. It was truly great taking the bus, as on the train, most of the times, things just pass by you in a blur. But when you're on the bus, you actually get to see the little details that are happening and feel the dynamic of the city. Now we're going to Daiba because Toyosu Market is closed. There was like an announcement in the train station, so it's kind of sad. Shops in Daiba opened pretty late, so if you're a morning person like me, plan this spot in the afternoon. However, the scenery there was still really nice, and there was even a little Statue of Liberty sitting outside. Before moving on, of course I had to have another Pablo cheese tart. I'm at Asakusa now, and I'm going to Kami, Kam, Kami Namimon, which is like... I think it's like a temple or like shrine that is very famous in Japan. Um, you can see that there's like a lot of people behind me. Do you see all the people who are all going to Kaminalimon? There's so many people. So everyone's trying to like stuff into this little road and apparently it's just too crowded for me so I'm gonna like take the sidewalk instead. There is some stuff to see but most of the um, the main 
little the little shops are all in the middle, so like it's too crowded there. So we're just like not gonna go there. Just like all the other large shrines, there's a lot of shops around that sell traditional Japanese food, souvenirs, and goods. I also bought myself one omamoli, which is the lucky charm. It was a bummer that photography was not allowed, but it was great to just feel the vibe ourselves. After visiting the shrine, we decided to head to Ueno Station for lunch. Ueno is one of the cultural sites in Tokyo that hosts the Ueno Park, museums, and traditional shops. So it is no wonder that there are a lot of people around too. Right now, I'm in a tempura restaurant and I ordered a vegetable tempura, which is hot. Um, so it has rice. And at the same time, there's like a bowl of hot so um, soba noodles here. And it comes with also a miso soup. We passed by a super famous street called Ameya Yokocho, which is an open air market. After that, we decided to explore the city a bit more. Now I'm randomly walking on the streets to um, Yurakucho. <laughs> From Ueno to Yurakucho was actually a 3 mile walk, but it was great to just walk around and explore the places in between. I'm still in the middle of nowhere and I think this is like a business area, so there are like a lot of tall buildings around. After strolling for I don't know how many hours till my feet hurt it, I finally arrived in Ginza, which was basically next to Yurakucho. I was so grateful that I was finally heading to dinner. I had the signature sushi for dinner, and the two most unforgettable dishes were the uni sushi and of course natto sushi. Well, thanks dad for adding in the decorative wasabi. The lights in Ginza at night look amazing, just the perfect way to end the day with. It's a brand new day and we started the day with some sukiyaki in an enormous pot and also a set of delicious sashimi. Look at how beautifully they plate their dishes. It is day 6 and I'm in Akabane station right now. Um, I've never been here before so I don't really know what there is but we're planning on exploring everything right here so I'm really excited to what we would see today. Look at all these Pokemon crane games they have in Japan. I really wanted to try it but I feel like it would be super super hard. Would anyone really want these? Like it's so hard to actually get them. On this random street that I just don't know where it is, and it's really funny because like I feel like most of I feel like most of the people here are locals, so there aren't a lot of like um, shops that you can usually see in Tokyo. It's more like really localized markets and stuff. Akabane has a lot of small streets like this where you would see locals doing their groceries, people chatting with store owners, or traditional shops that sell cheap food. It is just a very different side of Tokyo that I wasn't very used to seeing. I just found a restaurant that has um, kushikatsu, which is deep fried skewers, and I ordered two beef um, skewers, one cheese, um, one asparagus, one shiitake mushroom. Everyone here is like a local and um, they don't really speak it first, so I assume that it's something that all the locals like to eat, so I'm gonna try it and see how it is. After having a late lunch, we decided to go to Saitama City. Right now, I have went north of Tokyo, so honestly, I can't remember the name of the station because it's pretty long, but it so happened to be a pretty big, um, a pretty big station, so there, there are like malls around and then there are like different shops here. I found a perfect spot that helped me take a very nice shot of the cotton candy sky and a snapshot of this beautiful area. Doesn't it look amazing? I was also lucky enough to catch the sunset while waiting for the train to get back to Tokyo for dinner. It is always a pleasure to see the stunning colors of the sky during sunset. I'm at Ikebukuro again um, and I went into Sunshine City which is a shopping mall. At the 59th floor there's this place called um, Shushi Ginza Fukusuke. We've ordered a lot of toro, scallops, and salmon sushis. My favorite was definitely the toro ones. We also ordered another sushi set with various kinds of fish there. They absolutely tasted delicious. 
From high above, we were also able to enjoy the night view of Tokyo, which was amazing. It's a Sunday and I'm in Harajuku right now. Um, the street is super, super crowded. I'm inside a cat cafe right now. Tonggung Shrine was once destroyed by bombs, but was quickly rebuilt in 1964. Quite different from the busy surrounding area, this shrine is quiet and relaxing. It is not known by tourists, but is actually a place where many marriages take place. After visiting the shrine, we had a late lunch at the restaurant famous for its fried chicken wings. The chicken wings were crispy and were seasoned on point. I would definitely like to visit this restaurant again. I'm at Daikan Yama right now. Daikan Yama is right next to Harajuku. Different from the fast-paced Harajuku, Daikan Yama is a much more laid-back place to be in. For this bookstore that looks super pretty, which is called Zutaya Books. Zutaya Books is a modern complex that looks visually appealing both outside and inside. It is comprised of three connected buildings and offers a wide selection of books. You can see that they have a wall displaying all sorts of pens and a whole stationary corner. This bookstore is surprisingly quiet given the large number of people present inside. After stopping briefly at a small underground cafe nearby, we decided to head back to Tokyo Station for our dinner. Last meal of the trip. In the restaurant, we had sukiyaki again with an egg on the side to dip into and an ochazuke, meaning a fish rice bowl with tea. It's the trip is coming to an end. Ten I'm on the monorail right now. Oh, and to the airport. My. This monorail is super cute as you can see that it has been decorated by many Pokemon stickers on the windows. I literally can't believe that I'm heading to the airport. The whole week just seemed to happen in a blink of an eye. How did time pass by so fast? I'm at the airport waiting to depart back to the States. Um, it's been a fun trip but it's obviously not long enough. Um, I don't want to go back yet, but hopefully I get to come to Japan again in the future. Yeah. Now that I've been back in the States for over a week, everything seems normal again, but I sure did miss the time that I spent in Tokyo. So these two videos were basically summaries of what I did in Tokyo. If you like it, remember to give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button down below. If there's anything you want to see in the future, feel free to comment down below. I'll be sure to check it out and respond to your comment. I'll see you next time. Bye!